Hey all you cool cats and kittens, it's Carol from Big Cat Rescue. I am about to go live on the Dodo Impact. All right. The plot twists just keep on coming. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most shocking Tiger King moments. For this list, we're looking at some of the most unbelievable and jaw-dropping moments and revelations from the true crime documentary series Tiger King, Murder, Mayhem, and Madness. And I asked him every day, I said, why well, I me? Mean. He said, because God put me here to make you smile, and that's my job. Please note, this video will contain major spoilers. So if you haven't watched this explosive series yet, go binge watch it and come back. If ever I would leave you, it couldn't be in springtime. Seeing you in springtime, I never could go. You are something else. <laughs> Number 10, Jeff Steals the Zoo. Everybody was loyal to Joe when we got here. And I think they kind of were skeptical that these two people were going to come in here and, and make things better. Just as everything appears to be falling apart for GW Zoo owner Joe Exotic, a would-be savior descends from on high, seemingly poised to save the day. Jeff Lowe presents as a successful businessman with a love for big cats, and considering his larger-than-life fashion sense, unflappable confidence, take-no-prisoners attitude, and willingness to throw money around, he appeals to Joe in a major way. For fear of losing the park to his ongoing legal battle with Carol Baskin, Joe transfers ownership of the zoo to Jeff Lowe, but it doesn't take long for the latter to show his true colors. Jeff conned everyone because he's jealous. He's a little man and he's bald. In the ultimate power move, Lowe, who many have described as the ultimate con man, turns on Joe and boots him from the zoo he built. Joe is the entertainment director by title. Even though Jeff was the owner of the park, Joe was the star of the show. I made it. Jeff was the star of his show. So which one was going to rule this Gosh. world? Number nine, everything about Doc Antle. Here I am long ago on The Late Show with David Letterman. I've got my big plant panther there, Shadow. Jay brought us out into the forefront of people. He got to meet my animals like no one else had ever done. Though Joe Exotic is the starring attraction, Tiger King introduces a number of major players in the world of big cats. In the first episode, we meet Doc Antle, who Joe describes as having had a major influence on him. So I'm Dr. Bhagavan Antle, B-H-A-G-A-V-A-N, Antle, A-N-T-L-E, Dr. Bhagavan Antle. With his success in the movie industry and more polished zoo, Antle initially comes off as eccentric but generally more reputable. Then in episode two, Cult of Personality, the curtain is pulled back. You know, we lived in these terrible horse stalls, basically. like with sliding doors with bars on them. It's full of cockroaches. I mean, everywhere. Doc Antle is revealed to essentially have a harem of wives and runs his zoo in a way not dissimilar to that of cult leaders, complete with emotional and psychological manipulation. Later, others go so far as to accuse him of secretly euthanizing tigers after they grow beyond the profitable cub phase. Number eight. Murder plot. Do I believe that Joe had a conversation with someone and said, man, I wish Carol was dead? Absolutely. He said it a hundred times. From the very beginning of the series, we're told that this narrative is going to involve a murder plot. But with so much craziness going on in the world of Joe Exotic, it's easy to forget that that's where the story is headed. Of course, Joe's incessant violent threats towards Carol Baskin do help lay the groundwork for the murder for hire. When I do become a psychotic, that's my going to Tampa gun. Across episodes 6 and 7, we learn the details of how Joe allegedly hired handyman Alan Glover to kill Carol Baskin. According to Glover, Jeff Lowe and James Gerritsen, who shockingly became an FBI informant, there were detailed discussions as to how and where to do the crime. And this guy starts coming toward me. The whole time he's approaching me, I'm thinking, at what point is he close enough that I should just turn this gas nozzle into his face? The price? According to Glover, they agreed on $5,000, but Joe only gave him $3,000. Yeah, he gave me three grand. He supposed to get $5,000, but he only got three. Number seven, it's not over. Ongoing FBI investigation. What started out as this feud between two people, good and noble fight to stop cub selling, cub petting, turned into a personal and legal court battle. Considering Joe's style of dress, the haircuts of the people he surrounds himself with, and the quality of life portrayed in the series, 
It's easy to forget that all this happened fairly recently. And as we're reminded by the end titles in the last episode, this story is far from finished. Joe might be in jail, but there are still a lot of legal issues to be unraveled. One of the biggest end credits reveals is that Doc Antle's zoo was raided in 2019. Though not mentioned in the series, Tim Stark's Wildlife in Need, located in Indiana, is the subject of a pending lawsuit. And with more captive tigers in the United States than globally in the wild, the big cat debate is very much ongoing. Did I do it on purpose? No, I was wrapped up in, in having a zoo. Number six, Joe runs for office. Political condoms, vote for me or you need this because you're screwed. Just when you think that Joe Exotic's life, and by extension this series, can't get any crazier, he gets into politics. By this point in time, he's already struggling to keep his zoo running under the crushing weight of his legal battles with Carol Baskin. Nonetheless, he announces his intention to run for president. Then, saying that he can't wait that long, he instead decides to run for governor and actually follows through. His quest for office is a complete mess, largely because of Joe himself. His campaign manager is easily among the show's most sympathetic figures. He had no idea what a libertarian is. He still has no idea what a libertarian is. Despite the odds, Joe actually winds up third in the polls. But the campaign ultimately only serves to hasten his financial ruin. His governor campaign, I think that's where he kind of lost his path as far as what was the priority. Number five, staff members arm. My biggest thing, and it was derived from Joseph, he said, our mission is to give these animals a fighting chance. In the first episode of the series, we meet Kelsey Saf Safri, who is without a doubt among Joe's most loyal employees. Even after everything that's happened, she's generally kind when talking about Joe. And considering she lost her arm working for him, that is saying a lot. From the very beginning, it's clear that Joe's zoo isn't overly concerned with safety protocols. Few of the employees seem to have experience or formal training. And in episode two, we learn that sure enough, Kelsey lost her arm to a tiger attack. The fact that there's actually footage of the immediate aftermath is shocking enough, but even harder to wrap your mind around is the fact that Kelsey was back at work within days. The arm is completely gone. We do not have time to wait. Number four, Joe's guilty verdict. They strip you butt naked, put you in a six by eight foot concrete room with no windows, no blankets, no nothing. Considering everything Joe does and is alleged to have done throughout the series, it's perhaps not so hard to believe that he wound up being sentenced to 22 years in prison. Given his age, this is essentially a life sentence. Then again, Joe's lifestyle makes it seem like he lived in his own personal Wild West. He's always blowing stuff up, making death threats, and operating in gray areas when it comes to his animals. As such, despite it being an inevitability, it's simultaneously hard to fathom that he actually went down. His phone calls from prison are especially hard to listen to, as he genuinely seems to think he can get out and start over. You know what they threatened me with? 79 years. Number three, the studio and Gator Pit Fire. We're offering a $10,000 reward for information leading to the arrest and the conviction of either this suspect or the people that were involved. Every time you think this docuseries cannot possibly get any crazier, some new curveball is thrown our way. About halfway through episode four, tragedy strikes the GW Zoo when a massive fire occurs on the property, consuming both Joe's studio and the alligator pit. It becomes immediately clear that this was an act of arson. That building where, where the alligators were kept, as well as a, a studio that Joe had, it was clearly an arson. It was a set fire. And Joe is quick to point the finger at Carol Baskin and or quote animal rights people. The alligators were killed in the fire. Joe is no longer able to film his web series, and producer Rick Kirkham loses all the footage he put together for his reality show. The biggest shocker, though? A video and various testimonials that heavily imply that Joe himself may have been behind the fire. After the studio burned, whether he destroyed it or not, it was gone. Number two, Carol's husband's disappearance. My understanding was that, that he was killed. In the first two episodes of the series, a dichotomy is set up between Joe Exotic and Carol Baskin. They sit on opposite ends of the big cat debate. And while they're both undeniably eccentric, Carol comes across as the more altruistic and good intentioned of the two. Then episode three starts and we get an entirely different side of Carol. The whole episode is dedicated to the story of Carol and the disappearance of her previous husband, millionaire Don Lewis. 
The latter had tried to file a restraining order against her just months prior to his suspicious disappearance. The inclusion of the word disappearance in his will is also considered highly suspect, prompting many to suspect Carol of foul play. It just makes for wonderful sales of newspapers, I'm sure, for them to speculate that I fed him to the tigers, which is crazy. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Travis's death. Neither Travis nor John Finley were gay. And Joe admitted that to me. Episode five of this series, Make America Exotic Again, is without a doubt the most shocking of the bunch. Simultaneously to Joe's political campaign, we learn about the nature of his relationship with his two husbands, John and Travis. According to multiple testimonies, his behavior was predatory and possessive. He controlled them with gifts, money, and drugs. John eventually leaves Joe for a woman, and Travis accidentally shoots himself. We don't see it happen, but we do see campaign manager Joshua Dial react to Travis's death off-camera. The footage is hard to process and extremely upsetting. Adding to the insanity of this tragedy, Joe finds himself a new young partner and is married again within two months of Travis's death. He married Dylan. Invited me to the wedding. Okay, I thought it was gonna be a wedding. You know, no, it was the cameraman, me, and the flower girl. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.